What's up everyone? Today we're going to look at how to create a cinematic color grade in Photoshop using curves, blend if, and gradient maps. And at the very end, I'll show you how to create a LUT based on this color grade so that we can apply it to multiple photographs in a series. Let's get started and let's cover todo el pedo. It's been a while since I've created a color grading video, so I'm excited to show you some of the new techniques that I've been implementing in Photoshop. So one of the first things that we want to do is we want to make sure we analyze the colors in the photograph before we start color grading. So already looking at this image, we already have a lot of yellows because of the wardrobe. And then of course we have like the oranges because of the skin tone. So if we look at this color wheel, we got yellow and orange. Opposite of that is going to be our teal and our blue in the complementary color scheme always looks great when you're color grading. Now, another color that we see in this image is the greens in the grass and also in the trees. And so what I want to do is I also want to look at those greens and opposite of green is going to be magenta. So I'm going to be adding hints of magenta also in this color grade, also going with a complementary color scheme. So I'm going to go ahead and delete those reference layers. And before we start the color grading, remember that it's always a great idea to do your skin retouching first. And if you're new to the channel, I do have beginner level tutorials on how I do dodge and burn and frequency separation for skin retouching. I'll have those linked in the description. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into my layers panel and I'm going to go into my adjustment layers icon and I'm going to go ahead and start off with the curves adjustment. What I like doing is I like going into my reds, greens and blues and we're going to start off with the reds and when you start off in the reds channel. What happens if I lift this up, this will add more red. And if I drag this down, it'll add more teal to the image. Now I'm going to add a visual reference in other programs like Lightroom, Camera Raw, Capture One. They have that visual reference for you in Photoshop. They still haven't added that. I'm waiting for them to add that. But to start is I always add a middle point here in the middle of my curves. And the reason for that is like setting up a little nice anchor for me, because what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up to this top point here and this is my whites and my highlights. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag this down. I'm actually going to remove some of those reds. And what I want to do is I want to start adding a little bit of that teal. So knowing that on this side of the curves, it adds teal. If I raise it up, it's going to add reds. So I'm removing some of the reds and I'm adding a little bit of teal going back to the first thing that we talked about. I want to add teal and blues into my color grade. So we already started that off. Now I'm going to go into my greens and I'm going to use that same technique. I'm going to go and I'm going to add a nice little anchor right here in the middle. But this time I'm going to grab this top anchor and I'm going to drag this to the left. And by dragging it to the left, this is going to add more greens and also a little bit more magenta. And we talked about this earlier. Green and magenta are complementary color, complementary colors. If I were to drag it down, it's going to add magenta, which doesn't look great. So what I want to do is I want to drag this to the left. And I want to make sure that we're right around 235 on my input. Then I'm going to go into my blues and I'm going to add the same thing. Another nice little midpoint anchor. And then now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back up to this top one and by dragging this down, this is going to add yellows into my color grade. So I'm going to come down right around to 238. So every single point that I was moving around had a purpose. Bringing this down was to add more of those yellows into the color grade. When I went into my greens, dragging it to the left, enhanced those greens, but also added the magenta. And then on the reds, we brought this down to get rid of the reds and add a little bit more bloom. Now that we're back in the reds, now since we started with the highlights and white point, I'm going to come into my black and my shadow point. And what I want to do is if I raise this up, you'll notice that I get this kind of faded kind of sepia look, which looks really cool because it kind of goes with the wardrobe, kind of goes with the general concept of the shoot. So I'm going to raise this up to about two on my output. I'm going to click that little square and I'm just going to type it in just so I get it a little bit more accurate. Then I'm going to go back into my greens and what I'm going to do on my greens is I'm going to drag it to the right. And if you remember, when I drag this item to my right, it adds more magentas. And we discussed this earlier, right? Opposite of green is magenta. So dragging this in just a little bit, we don't want to get too cute. So I'm going to go about three 
And then I'll go into my blues and the same thing. We'll drag this up and we'll get my output and we'll add just a little bit more blue into the image because raising this up, let me go ahead and do this. We'll add blues into my color grade and then dragging this to the right will add a little bit yellow, but the yellow doesn't look good. I'm just gonna raise it up and we'll go the output about two. Now I'm gonna go back to the RGB and I wanna add a little bit of contrast to the overall image. So I'm gonna grab my black slider and I'm gonna drag this in to about input. Let's go to, we don't wanna to get too crazy because if we drag it too much, it starts to lose too much of the detail and we start to crush everything. So I'm gonna go about input to. So already with this first color grade, if I hit this little eyeball, you'll see the before and after. It's a very subtle effect, but it's already giving us a great starting point. We still need to get to a couple of other adjustment layers, but this is already cleaning up the image and already giving us a good general direction with our color grade. Now that we've added the curves, we're gonna go ahead and add another adjustment layer. We're gonna come back to the adjustment layers icon, and this time we're gonna go into solid color. And what we wanna include in this color grade is some more teal. So I'm gonna go ahead and type in the code that I had or the hex code. And so this was the color that I liked to include in my color grade. And when I first edited this image in Instagram, I got a lot of great feedback. A lot of people enjoyed the way I color graded this image. And a lot of it was because of this next step, which was filling it in with this teal, setting the blend mode to soft light, and what you'll notice is right now, obviously it's just way too strong, but I'm gonna set it back to normal because I want you to see the visual reference of what we're gonna do with this. So what we wanna do, and this is another new technique that I've been doing, is when I double click in this blank area, is I'm gonna get the layer style property box. Now I know I've shown people the blend F before, but I've never shown them doing it strictly with the midtones. So what I wanna do is I want this color grade to go into midtones. More often than not, I would show, okay, let me just remove it from the highlights or the shadows. Right now I'm removing it from the shadows, as you can see there. And then as I remove it from the shadows, so as I drag the slider, basically I'm saying, don't include it in the blacks or the shadows. And obviously it's not blending. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold Alt and I'm gonna drag this all the way out and you'll see that it starts to blend. But now what I'm also including is I'm also including the white slider. So I'm gonna drag the whites right around 216. I'm gonna hold Alt and then break this apart. And we're gonna go about 102. So instead of just focusing on one specific area of just the shadows or just the highlights, now I'm blending it off. So from the shadows, we have it, it's gonna start here and it's gonna blend off. So it's not gonna be included from the shadows on to the left. And then the highlights, you'll notice that it's not gonna be in these bright areas. It's gonna start here and it's gonna blend and fade off. So now what I'm gonna do is obviously, the effect doesn't look good like this. We wanna now adjust the field opacity. So I'm gonna go ahead and adjust it to about 30. And then I'm also going to change the blend mode to soft light. So when I hit OK, you'll see because I faded it only into the midtones, and I've also changed the blend mode to soft light and lowered the opacity to 30%, I can just hit this eyeball and I can see the subtle color grade that it's adding to the skin tone, but to also the wardrobe and to the background. And what's great about this specific technique using the color fill is if I double click this square, I can always change my mind and change the color grade to whatever color I want. And I can tweak it however I want. But in this case, I'm gonna go ahead and leave it like that. Now this next one is one of my favorite techniques to add some overall contrast to the image. So we're gonna go back to the layers dialog box to the adjustment layer. Then I'm gonna go into the gradient map. And what I wanna do is I wanna go into my options here. And we wanna to go to photographic toning. Now I know some of you guys might not have this as an option, 
So if you don't have this as an option, all you need to do is go to window and then gradients. And in this gradients dialog box on the top right, you're going to go ahead and click this little icon. And then you'll go ahead and select legacy gradients. Now, once you have that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go open up that dialog box, scroll down, and we're going to go to something called photographic toning. Now, the option that I'm going to look for is one called sepia number two. When I go ahead and click that, you'll see that it adds this kind of nice vintage look to the image, but it's also going to add some nice kind of overall tones in my image. You'll notice that as the gradient fades, what it's going to do is that this gradient is specifically going to add this tone into my shadows, this tone into my midtones, this tone into my highlights, and this one into my whites. Now, in order for us to do that, we have to change the blend mode to soft light. And you'll notice that the effect comes out pretty strong. We're going to reduce that effect by going to the fill and we're going to reduce it all the way down to about 25. So overall, I'm going to go ahead and let's take a look at the overall color grade as it's coming together. We just have one more. And then now, then we're gonna jump into how to create the LUT. So we have the curves. Then we had the teal and the midtones that we implemented. And then we have our overall contrast that we're adding to the image. For this last adjustment layer, what we're gonna do is we're gonna add another curves adjustment layer. So we're gonna go curves. And this is where I'm gonna want to exaggerate the blues and then we're gonna blend it in with the same technique that we just implemented with our color fill layer. So I'm gonna go into my reds. I'm gonna go ahead and add a point. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and just type in the numbers here. So we're gonna go 148 and then 118 on my output. And what you'll notice is remember when I drag that midpoint down, it's gonna add teals. So here you can see that the teal is very, very strong. And the reason why we want to go teals, we discussed this at the beginning. Once again, we want that complementary color scheme. So we're going opposites. We're adding that nice teal. Then we'll go into greens. And what we're going to do is we're going to drag this up to 124 to 128. And by dragging it a little bit to the left, that is going to add just a little bit of greens for the grass that we have in the image. Then we're going to go into the blues. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and add our final input and output. So I'll just click inside here. I'll go ahead and type in the numbers to make it a little bit easier. 115 and then 127. And in this case, you'll see that by dragging it to the left, it's going to add a little bit of those blues. So the first one on the reds is adding more of those teals. And then on the blues, by dragging it to the left, it's adding just a little bit more bloom. Now, when we have this effect, obviously, let me go ahead and drag this. By the way, it needs to be at the very top. I don't think it makes a difference, but I'm just going to drag it all the way to the top. One of the things is obviously this doesn't look great. We want to do the same technique with the blend if strictly in the midtone. So I'm going to come back into this little area. I'm going to double click. And I'm going to go to the underlying layer and I'm going to go ahead and drag this to about 20. And the purpose of me doing this once again is removing it from the blacks. I only want it to show up from this point on and I need to fade it and blend it. So I'm going to hold alt to break that apart. And then I'm going to go into my whites and I'm going to go about 240 because I don't want this in my whites. And I'm going to go ahead and drag this and break this apart and fade it to about 123. So once I have that, you'll see the preview here. This is what I get. This is the before and the after. So this new fade technique that I'm now implementing is making a huge difference, is fading it into the midtones. It's giving me a nice overall blend. And so still, it's a little bit too strong. This is where it's subjective. Depending on your photograph, this is where you can come in and adjust your uh, fill opacity. So in this case, I'll go about 20 and uh, 21 is fine. I'll hit OK. And then what I'll do is I'm going to go ahead and group everything just for demonstration purposes. So this is the before and then the after of every single 
color grade that we had. Before we get into how to create a LUT in Photoshop, I do want to talk about today's video sponsor, which is Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community where millions come together to take their next step in their creative journey. Skillshare offers thousands of inspiring classes for creative people on topics including photography, productivity, business, and more. Make great use of your downtime and check out Skillshare's online classes, which include a combination of video lessons and class projects. The class I just finished watching was Street Photography Composition, Five Techniques for Standout Photos by Craig Whitehead. And the reason why I decided to watch this class is that I suck at street photography. I wanted just a fresh perspective from a professional and see what takeaways I could get and maybe apply to my portrait photography. So out of the five techniques that Craig talked about, subframing was the one that really stood out to me. And it's something that I want to incorporate in my studio work. I do have this new optical spot and I'm figuring out what kind of new lighting techniques can I apply. So by watching something completely from my style street photography, I was able to gain some knowledge and now apply it into my studio portrait work. Skillshare offers the perfect opportunity to start learning new skills. The first 1000 people who use the link in my description will receive a one month free trial to Skillshare Premium. Now that we've put the work into this color grade, let's go ahead and create a LUT so that we can apply this to multiple different photographs to speed up our editing workflow. So in Photoshop, in the layers panel, I want to make sure that I only see the adjustment layers. I still have my skin retouching and my background and I want to merge these two layers because I only want to be able to see my adjustment layers. So I'm going to hold control so I can select both of these layers. Then I'm going to go to the layers and I'm going to put merge layers. So now what you'll see is I only have the adjustment layers that I created for my color grade. Now I'll go to file, we'll go to export, and then you'll see it says color lookup table. At this point, we're going to leave it at medium and wrote for formats. We're just going to check mark cube. The description, you can just leave it as is. I'll go ahead and hit OK. And then last but not least, it's going to go ahead and ask me, what do I want to name this file? So I'll just name this um, Joanna YouTube and then I'll put Infante and I'll put save. And now let's say that I'm working with multiple photographs from this series. Let me go ahead and open up the other images that I have. Let's go and ahead and open up these other two images from this series. And so now what I can do is what's great about this LUT is that now I can go ahead and apply this quick color grade. So if I hit this adjustment layer, I can go to color lookup right here. It says load. I'm going to go load 3D LUT. And then here it is YouTube Infante double click. And now that color grade has been added. Now, if I feel like it's too strong, I can always come into my fill adjustment and I can reduce that effect. But real quickly, with just that one option, I can add a very similar color grade to my other images in this series. And it doesn't even have to be images from this series. It can be future images that I edit. If I want to have a cohesive color grade on all my images, I can use this technique. So I'm going to do it on this image, color lookup. I'll come back, load 3D LUT, Joanna YouTube, and then same thing, just reduce the fill to whatever I feel looks great. Well, that does it for this video. If you guys enjoyed this video and you're new to the channel, don't forget, guys, I have plenty of editing tutorials, also videos on how I shoot. So I would love if you guys would support the channel and subscribe. And I will see you guys on the next one.